Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson one of the EZ80 series of my programming tutorials. We're looking at the EZ80 today. Well, what's that? Well, you might have heard of the Z80, the classic 8-bit processor. Well, the EZ80 increases the addressing bus from the 16 bits, which allowed for 64K of memory, to 24 bits, which allows up to 16 megabytes of memory. It also adds some other clever commands as well, and all of the previous 16-bit register pairs, HODE and so on, are now upgraded to 24 bits as well so we'll be looking at all of that now this series is going to assume you already know Z80 if you don't know Z80 then you have three possible choices firstly I already have a series of Z80 tutorials on my website which I did a few years ago I'm planning a new improved series and this is um, 2021 so there'll be a 2021 series coming out in a few months you can also buy my book it's called learn multi-platform assembly with TV Akimas it covers Z80 6502 68080 and ARM it's available from Amazon now. So it covers Z80, the classic Z80, but if you're interested in other processors as well, I'm sure you'll find it very interesting. And if the book's a success, I will do another one which will cover EZ80. Now, the other thing I would suggest you do is go to my website and you get the cheat sheet. If you follow this link here, you can get this enormous cheat sheet here. And you might need very good eyes or an A3 printer, but there's lots of good stuff on here. It's got the entire instruction set of the Z80 and the EZ80 and you can see that the commands are in fact colored depending on which of the CPUs support it. So the Z80 commands are in black and the EZ80 ones are in this kind of purple color. So I would suggest you get that because I'm sure it'll help you out if you're doing programming. Now we're going to be programming the TIE84 calculator and we're going to be using an emulator we're going to be using this emulator here it's called cmu now this is a free emulator but you do need to get your own rom because legal reasons you can't be handing roms around um two things to say about this um i'm only testing these on an emulator i have a real calculator but some of the examples we're going to be looking at later we're going to be directly accessing ports and things. I you, you really don't want to do that in a real calculator. We, we're doing it for learning purposes, but I'm not, I can't guarantee the effect any of these would have on a real calculator. So it's all at your own risk. And I would recommend you do it on the emulator. The other thing to know if you're buying now, I believe that the newer calculators can't run assembly code anymore. They took the function off. So be very careful and read around the subject to see if you can roll back the firmware or maybe they rescinded on that threat. They certainly had enabled it before, but I bought before that happened. So just some warning there in case you are planning on spending money that you don't end up with something that can't do what you wanted. OK, so what is the new features of the EZ80? Well, the main thing is, as I say, is the extra addressing and also the improved registers. So all of the registers are still basically 8-bit. So your accumulator is still 8-bit, your L register is still 8-bit. But your HL register is now actually 24 bits and it's made up of theoretically three parts now. You've got the L part, which is the 8-bit low part. You can see that that's the bottom part here. You've then got the H part, which is the bits 8 to 15 if, if effectively. And then you've got a new part, which is referred to as HLU, which is basically bits 16 to 23, the top eight bits of the 24 bit um, combination of HL. Now, the tricky thing with this is, is you can't actually access it directly in any way. You can access the full 24 bit HL triple, as we could call it now, but you can't, whereas you can use H and L as 8-bit parts, you can't use HLU on its own. Um, so that's a shame, but that is, don't look for it, you can't do it. So BC is now 24 bits made up of BC, BC and BCU. DE is now 24 bits made up of DE and DE and DEU. So is HL, so is IX, so is IY. The accumulator is of course 8-bit and the flags are still also 8 bits. Now the emulator we're using, the TIE 84, will actually start up in the enhanced mode. So all the examples today, we're going to be looking at these 24-bit functions and we're not going to have to worry about switching between modes, though we will look at that in a later lesson. Now, the stack is a little bit tricky. We actually have two stack pointers. We have the stack pointer for 24-bit mode, which is the one we'll be using. 24-bit um, mode is often called ADL mode. Or I often call it Easy 80 mode because it, it makes more sense to me that way. The classic Z80 mode, the original mode, that has an alternate 16-bit stack. Now, the top 
8 bits of that is made up of the MB, the M base as it's called, which is basically the, the filling in of the blanks for the 16-bit addresses to make them into 24 bits for the 24-bit range. So we've got this 8-bit M base register MB here. We still have our refresh register, which is still 8 bits. And we still have the I register, which you'll probably never need, but it's used by Interrupt Mode 2, and that has been extended to 16 bits. Now, if you'd never use Interrupt Mode 2, which you probably never will, then you can actually use this for temporary storage. So, you know, worth bearing in mind there. Now, the of course, the program counter, that is now 24 bits as well. So we're going to skip over the switching between modes and things. That's quite complicated. We are going to look at it, but not today. We're going to be playing around with some of the new commands and some of the old commands that now work very differently. So let's go over to our source code. Let's take a look. Now, as you can see there at the top of the screen, all the source code can be downloaded from my website. So please go ahead and download it from the website, because otherwise, why am I putting it there? So first of all, we're going to be trying some simple loads. We're just going to load some values into our new, newly extended registers. So what we need to do here is we need to start our program here. I've got my scripts here, the build scripts, set to automatically transfer straight to the emulator, and we just need to run it. So it's been transferred into ROM here, into RAM, sorry. So let's take a look at our examples here. Well, the first one we're doing is we're loading the accumulator with the decimal value 128. Well, that's a pretty simple thing to do. And you can see here the AF register, the accumulator and the flags have been loaded with 80 and the flags are 6C. 8t in hexadecimal is of course 128 in decimal and we can of course confirm that if I just get my calculator up here and we type in 128 that is of course hexadecimal 8t so there we go so we've got the right value there and our accumulator has been indeed set now when we want to set HL and the other previously 16-bit register pairs well those are all now 24 bits and we don't need to specify them in any different way in fact, once we're in this so-called ADL mode, this easy 80 mode, well, they're always 24 bits. So when we specify a number here, we're specifying 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in hexadecimal. That's a 24-bit number. That wouldn't fit into a, an old HL, but it will fit into the HLU combination here. So we've loaded that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 there. And my screen has indeed gone to sleep here. So, so you can see HL has been loaded with one, two, three, four, five, six there, and the power display has got in the way there. Very annoying. So anyway, we've managed to load a 24-bit combination there. Now, I should point out that the monitor function I'm using here is a software monitor I've written myself. It just reads in all of the register values. So that's how we're testing today. The uh, emulator does have its own functions as well, but I tend to write my own little ones because I find it easier to have a constant platform in that way. So that's how we were able to load HL. Of course, we can load any of the pairs here in the same way. So here we're loading IX with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And you can see IX has been loaded with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now IY here, we've specified we're loading 1, 2, 3, 4, but actually we'll end up loading a full 24 bits there. So you can see here IY has been padded out with a double zero, 1, 2, 3, 4 there. So even if we think we're specifying 16 bits, we're actually loading a full 24 bits there because as I say, we are in this new ADL mode, this new easy 80 mode. And so all of the commands are going to be 24 bits and we will look at in a later lesson how to switch to 16 bit mode and use the classic Z80 functionality. Okay, so let's try some more commands. If I just run a program here, so what we're going to do first is we're going to load two 24-bit values here, and we're going to use the add command. Now, of course, we've used the add command before, but now the add command is going to work in 24 bits. So we've loaded HL and DE with some 24-bit values there. So HL was 100,000 there, and DE was 10,000. And when we've added those together, we get 110,000 there. So we're able to now work in 24 bits with our add HLDE command, because even though, as I say, HL and DE, you would have typically thought were 16 bits, they're now 24 bits. We can, of course, do the same with the subtract command here. We've done the subtract there, and you can see HL under that um, rather annoying um, icon there is showing um, 100,000 there. What we can also do is we can do a deck of HL, which is, of course, going to work in 24 bits. 
So when we deck uh, 100,000 there, we end up with FF, FF, F there. What is still the same as before is our 8-bit parts. So deck HL here, although it's still the same description as before, it's actually now a 24-bit triple of HLU, H and L. But when we just specify H, we're still using the 8-bit part that makes it up. So when we deck HL, it goes down to FF, FF, F. But then when we do the ink of H, the H part, that middle part there, goes up from FF, rolls around back to zero. So we end up with O, F, O, O, F, F, because H, O, U and L are unchanged. Only H has been changed by that ink command there. Now, as I say, HL is now a 24-bit triple. So when we do a push of H and L, we're actually now pushing three bytes. So, for example, here you can see that the stack pointer started as D1A83F, but after we've done a push, it's gone down by three bytes to D1A83C here. And what we've done next is we've loaded HL with a zero, which has, of course, cleared it. But then when we do our pop of HL, we restore the entire value back again because, as I say, all three bytes are now pushed onto the stack with that push command. Now, the frustrating thing, as I say, is if we've got a three byte command here like HL where we've loaded 112233, we can get the 22 part with our H register, the 33 part with our L register. But if for some mysterious reason, for example, if you're writing your own monitor tools, you need to get to the HLU part, you cannot get it directly. But what you can do is if you push the item onto the stack, you can then load the stack pointer into IX and you can read the byte off in that way, which is what I've in a lot of cases basically done here. So in this case, we've loaded in the accumulator and we've loaded in from effectively the top byte HLU here. And you can see we've got that one one there in the accumulator at the bottom there. So although it's, it's far from ideal, if you are in a bind and you really need to just get that upper part there, that is at least one way that you can do it. OK, well, let's have a go with some memory reading and writing. Now, it's not going to be particularly surprising to hear that when we use HL as a source, we can now use HL as a 24-bit address and read in from 24-bit memory addresses because, of course, well, that's the name of the game now. So when we do LDA from address HL, specifying HL in brackets, as would be usual in Z80, we can, of course, read in from an address here. So HL is pointing, pointing to the start of our range. So we've loaded in the accumulator and we've got 1-1 one, one here. What's quite surprising is that before, when we wanted to load in 16-bit pairs from HL, we would have to load in, for example, B and C separately. We can now specify to load in BC as a combination from HL. But this, of course, doesn't load in 16 bits. It loads in the full 24 bits. Of course, we can't actually specify to load in BCU from memory address HL because we can never access those upper parts. So you can see here, the start of this address range contains 11223344. And then we've specified to load in BC from HL with this command here. And you can see that now BC contains 112233. We've loaded it in directly, all three bytes, in little Indian format from that address there. So we can now load in, in three bytes in one go, which is a fantastic new command to have. We can, of course, still work at the byte level. We can just load in E here, and that will just load in a single byte. And you can see here we've loaded in E here, and that has, of course, just loaded in the first byte there. So we can still work at 8 bits as we always have, but now we can load in a 24 bit from a HL register in one go. This, of course, works with IX as well. So we can now use IX as an offset and load in three bytes in one go. Here we've loaded in HL from test data plus four. Well, you can see here that HL has been loaded with 776655, and you can see one, two, three, Four, seven, seven, six, six, five, five is four bytes offset from the start of that range. So we can load in a, a, a register triple from IX as well. So that's very convenient. 
Now, of course, these all work with writing as well. If we load in some test values here, an 8-bit value into the accumulator, obviously, a 24-bit value into BC and an 8-bit value into D, we can then write these back to our test data using our standard load commands. We just need to make sure we ink enough bytes to skip over the three bytes that will be written by the LD, HL, comma, BC there. And so we've written our test data back to memory here. So we've loaded in A1 and we've written that to the start of the range. You can see that there. We've loaded BC with B2, B3, B4, and we've loaded that in next, B4, B3, B2. It's been reversed, of course, because it's Little Endian. And then we've loaded D with D5 here, and we've written that to the next address in HL. And you can see that's been loaded into our range as well. So we can write data back to memory in exactly the same way as we could read it. So it's all very straightforward, really. As I say, those fantastic new commands for loading in an entire register triple now with a single command. So it's quite nice to have. Now, going out from the old commands that have been extended, we do have some new exciting commands. The most exciting one of all, possibly, is the multiply command. Um, the Z80 has never had a multiply command before unless you count the R800, the um, MSX2 2 Turbo R's R800 processor, which was uh, Z80 compatible, or it wasn't technically Z80. But we now have multiply commands, and these work in eight bits. So basically, what we do is we specify our registers, we load in a 16-bit value, and these two parts will be multiplied together, and the result will be stored in the register. So we've got some test values here. Let's check them out. So we've loaded BC with 0204. Well, 4 times 2 is, of course, going to be 8. So we've done that there. Then we've loaded DE with 1003. Well, 10 times 3 is, of course, going to be 30. It's in hexadecimal, of course, but that's pretty obvious. And then finally, we've loaded FO and 11 into HL. And we've multiplied that up. And that has given us a value of FFO in HL there. So the result is going to be 16-bit, but even if the sources are 8-bit, that's quite a nice um, function to have. Now, another command we have, which was actually crashing my emulator earlier, is the sleep command. It will stop the CPU until an interrupt occurs. It's designed for power saving, um, so it's not really going to be any use for us, but it did seem to crash my program. Oh, it seems to be working again now. Very strange. Um, it possibly just depends on how the um, how the program runs with regards to the timing of the process or something. But anyway, um, yeah, a, the sleep command is a new one that you're probably never going to need. But we are going through basically all of the new commands today. Um, one that you might um, find more useful is the new test command. Let's try that out. So the test command is a new command for setting the flags, the e equivalent to an and but not setting any of the registers. So the registers are unchanged, but the flags are set. This is a command that a lot of other processors have, and us Z80 fans have had to um, do without and pretend we weren't missing. Well, now we can feel just as worthy as the other processors, because now we have a test command. So we've loaded A with FO and B with OF here, and test A comma B will effectively do an AND of these two. And test A comma C will do an AND of a and C. So what we're effectively doing is anding FO and FO here. And of course, we are going to then show the results of the flag. So if the zero is flag set, we're going to show a Z. And if the zero flag is not set, we're going to show a non -Z, an NZ. And of course, anding FO and FO is going to result in non-zero. So we've shown NZ to the screen there. Just a simple little test to show how that works. Now, if I rem out this second command here, if I just put a rem there, and I run this again, well, now we're going to be testing FO and OF together. So if we just run that, well, of course, those result in a zero. So the zero flag has been set, and we've branched to show Z, and we've shown a Z to the screen. So if we need to test registers without changing the accumulator, because we want to use the accumulator later on, we can now do that. Another command which maybe you will find useful is the new effective address commands. Now, in the past, we've never had these. Um, these are basically for um, pre-calculating an address. A command where we're using ix plus a value as a, an, a source for data 
is very convenient, but it's quite slow and it can waste a bit of extra memory. So what we might want to do if we were repeatedly using IX plus 7 over and over again is save some memory and some time. We could pre-calculate the effective address that that equals and store that in another register. So what we're going to do here is we're going to give IX a test value. We're then going to store the effective address IX plus 7 in BC. So let's see that in action. So we've loaded IX with 123400 and you can see that here. What we've then done is we've loaded BC via the load effective address command with IX plus 7. Well, IX plus 7 is no surprise there, 123407. So we've loaded BC with that value. Now what we've done next is loaded DE with IX minus 1. So that has loaded in 1233FF. Now, the other thing we can do is rather than load the effective address into a register is we can push it onto the stack. Now, this is probably designed for us to pass an address as a parameter. Uh, often on uh, other systems like 68000, it's quite common to push the parameters for a subroutine onto the stack and then to remove them from the stack in the subroutine. It's not something I've ever done in Z80, but we now have the ability to do that if we so wish. So what I've done here is pushed IX plus 6 onto the stack and then I've popped it off into HL. And you can see here, 123406 has been popped off into HL from the stack there. So you can see that has now worked. Now, the last thing we are going to look at is some new strange registers that are available to us. They're, again, these aren't necessarily things you're going to need at this stage, but I want to go through everything so that we can say we've covered it all and we're going to go into more detail on these things later on. So the I register is nothing new, but before it was an 8-bit register, well, now it has been extended to a glorious 16 bits. So you can see here, we are loading the HL from the I register here. And if we look at our monitor here, you can see the I register contained four zeros. And so we've loaded that into the HL register here. What we've then done is loaded HL with one, two, three, four, five, six, and we've transferred that to the I register. Now, the I register is only 16 bits, so you can see that has been loaded with 3456 because the top HLU part has been ignored there. We also now have this MB, which is effectively the top byte of the 24 bit address in Z80 mode because the Z80 typically was 16 bits, but now we are working in a 24 bit address space, so we need 8 bits to fill the space, and that is the MB register, which it, we're currently in ADL easy 80 mode, so that has no function. But you can see here that MB equals D0, that's the um, address range we're in. So we can load that into the accumulator there. You can see AF has become D028 there. We can, of course, write back to that. Here we've loaded FF into the accumulator and we've transferred that back. And so you can see that the MB has now changed to FF. Now that would be quite dangerous if we were now using Z80 mode. So um, you need to be careful when you're doing these kind of things that you know what's going on. And of course, changing the I register if you were using Intuit mode two would cause uh, quite bad problems as well. But um, in, um, in the mode we're using, it's not gonna cause any problems. Now, the other register is of course the R register, which is used for memory refreshing. This is still an 8-bit register. You can read from it fine, but be very, very careful writing to it because you could damage your hardware because it could cause refreshes to occur to the memory more often than they should. So, uh, I mean, all of these you need to be careful with, but that one especially. Now, the final thing is there is this uh, mixed mode flag. If you are using mixed mode, which is where you're using Z80 and Z80 modes, you need to use ST mix. If you're not, if you're in just ADL mode, you can use RS mix to turn it off. And what this does is this will actually change the um, status of the way the interrupts are handled, how the um, processor switches modes during the interrupts again. Not something we're going to need at this stage, but I just wanted to go through all of the new commands so you could see the full range of what is available. And there we go. So as I say, please go to my website, download the source code and the build scripts and everything. And so you can have a go. And of course, get the cheat sheet as well. Cheat for victory. Um, so hopefully that will help you out. Anyway, I hope you've liked this. If you have, please like and subscribe. Basically, if it's before about June 2021, please go and watch my old Z80 tutorials. But if it's after that, then please see my new 2021 Z80 tutorials, which will hopefully be a lot better and a lot shorter, be a bit quicker and more to the point. Anyway, if you like what you've seen, like and subscribe. That really helps me out.
Thanks for watching today and goodbye.